Hey guys, welcome back. I hope all of you guys are doing awesome. Um, today I just wanted to give you a quick update kind of on the breeding season and what's going on here. Um, I might sound kind of sick because <laughs> unfortunately I uh, got coronavirus this past week. Um, uh, <laughs> unfortunately it was due to a third party who was not uh, <laughs> very aware of their symptoms and they passed it on to basically everybody in my family. So um, we're all doing okay. The kids actually aren't really showing any symptoms at all and I'm just kind of um, kind of tired, kind of feel like I have a bad cold, um, but I'm on steroids still from my issue back in February, so um, the doctor said that it's probably actually helping with the symptoms of coronavirus, so, um, but enough of that. So, um, <clears throat> this is my 70-30 rack, like for all my adult females here, and I decided to buy another ARS rack. I was looking at Freedom Breeders, um, they're a little more expensive, but they're pre-built. Um, but they're backed up now from when I looked at the website a couple weeks ago, like 20 some weeks or more uh, for shipping. And that's basically half a year. I can't really wait that long to get this rack in. Um, so I went with another ARS, but instead of getting a 7030, I got a 5540. So this is, uh, you know, the 70 series tubs and there's 30 of them in this rack. Um, that's gonna be the 55 series tubs and 40 of them in a rack. The difference between the 70 and the 55, I think is like maybe like seven inches. So where, you know, the 70, the 70 series tub is this whole length. I think the 55 series is like from here. Now, <clears throat> what that does is these 70 series tubs are really for the biggest of the biggest ball python females you have. Um, Princess here, for example, and Tesla's in there with her. Um, this is really the size tub you need for a big snake. Um, you know, she's over 4,000 grams and she just fits in there pretty good. Crystal here, who's a couple hundred grams smaller, um, and she's going in the shed, so I'm hoping that's her pre-lay shed, although I don't know if I really caught her ovulate. Um, she fits nice and snug back in there. <clears throat> now, who I'm gonna be moving into the 55 are probably snakes like my little uh, Sterling Lesser female here who just laid. Um, while she's been comfortable in this tub, there's no reason for her to really be in this. This is kind of a little too big for her. She's still like sub 2,000 grams. Um, so she doesn't need to be in this big of a tub. And let's say, uh, let's even like my Super NGODs, they're still around 1,500 grams or so. These tubs are really big for them. Um, <clears throat> when you have a snake in a tub that's kind of too big, um, it can make them not feel secure. Um, it can make them go off of food. Um, it can potentially make them not breed if they don't feel comfortable in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is move all of my females that aren't huge, that don't need to go in these big tubs out of this rack and into the 5540. I'm also gonna move my males, my adult males into that rack and if I have any females, you know, in my grow out rack over here that um, are feeding really well and that are close to a thousand grams or so, I'm probably going to move them in there too. Um, but these racks here, these um, Reptile Basics racks, I have six of them combined. They hold maybe a total of 100 hatchlings, roughly a couple less. And I really want to move everything out of these six racks here. <clears throat> So that they're only for my hatchlings because pretty soon they're going to start popping out eggs maybe in about a month or so and i have a lot more to come um for the babies i have i have four clutches in there now um i have at least two females that should be laying this week if i did my math right <clears throat> and i you know, saw that their, their prelay sheds were in there properly. Um, and then I have a bunch more that should be laying in the next month, month and a half. 
So I'm going to need as much space as I can get. <clears throat> Excuse me. Out of these racks here. So everything needs to come out of here. Um, ARS's lead time at this point. They said it's about 8 to 10 weeks. And I ordered about a week and a half ago. So I'm hoping it's closer on the 8, eight weeks. Because it will probably take me a day to build it. Um, and then I'll be able to get, move all these females into there. The other nice thing about those racks is they have... I bought more of these solid gray tubs. I do not like the translucent tubs. <clears throat> and these ones over here on this one are like completely see-through. I don't like it. I don't think it offers the security that makes them feel comfortable. Um, I like... And the other nice thing about moving them into those racks is that they have the cup holders, which I love. <clears throat> I run into a lot of issues with snakes that like to dump over the cup holders um you know i use these little pvc couplings to hold the water the water um the water cups upright but it's a pain in the butt to have to go through keep buying those and cutting them so <clears throat> you know moving the majority of my collection into ars racks just makes my life a lot easier um so that's what i'm going to do for that and um the other thing I did is I actually bought another level for this rack. This is 10 levels here, but I actually bought an 11th one. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this rack and put it between these two pillars here, the two I-beams. It'll actually fit there. I'll be able to put the 11th level in there. And instead of this holding 30 snakes, it'll hold 33 snakes. And I actually bought an 11th level for the 5540, and I'll be able to put it back here along that uh, side of the wall <clears throat> and instead of 40 snakes it'll hold 44 snakes so um you know it gives me a little more room with the snakes i'll be able to put a couple more in there and um it'll just make my life a lot easier as far as the breeding season goes um let's see i have two females that if i didn't catch either one of them ovulate um they shed around the beginning of March. <clears throat> this girl here is my Mojave Enchi. She's she's a big girl. She was a little over 3,000 grams when breeding season started. Um, let's see if I can pull her up. You can see there is a nice big lump right there in the middle of her belly. Um, I don't know if that's follicle slash ovulation because she shed about a month and a half ago. And she actually has not been paired up a whole lot since then because she was, at all, because that's, um, I actually paired her up to <clears throat> my bamboo ultramel male, who, if you remember, had the uh, respiratory infection. So she hasn't been paired up at all since that happened, which I think was the beginning of February. So I don't know if this lump here is the ovulation or if it's her eggs. But if they are her eggs, she should be starting to <clears throat> lay here any day. If not, that is the ovulation, um, and she should be laying in a month or so anyways. Uh, hopefully they'll all be fertile because, again, I'm not pairing them up anymore. Um, I was trying to hit the bamboo Mojave combos, and they'll be head ultra male as well. Just trying to get some blue eye Lucy's out of that combo, and they'll all be head ultra male. This girl here is my pastel lesser pet clown. Um, she's sort of the same thing. She shed on the 8th of March. Uh, she was about 2,000 grams when the season started, and she is super, super, super thick. I think these are eggs. I think she's ready to go, though. I'm assuming. As you can see, she's pretty much thick from her midsection all the way down on the bottom. And there's a kind of a nice suck in right there. Um, and she's very, very, very thick. So I think this, she's 100% for sure pregnant. Um, I'm hoping she proves to be het clown. <clears throat> Hopefully make some pastel lesser leopard clowns out of this combo. Um... She's probably a female I will keep if she turns out to be het clown, just because I don't have a bunch of clown females. So she'll probably stay in the collection. Now, this girl 
I'll probably end up getting rid of. Um, she actually laid a really nice clutch for me last year. I think it was seven or eight eggs. And she's huge. She's a gorgeous snake. She's really pretty. Um, but I don't know if I'm really going to have any use for her going into the future. So she might, you know, come on the market down the line. Um, and then as far as the other females that I'm seeing any sort of action on, my Super Phantom, she looks like she is going into shed right now. She was like super dark. She was, um, she was like almost bright purple. I had, I think I posted a picture of her on Instagram a week or two ago. Um, she had a huge ovulation. She was paired up to my Super Mojave banana male shredder. So, um, everything coming out of this is going to be a purple passion. Potentially, you can see right there, a little thick. Um, everything's going to be coming out of here is purple passion. Um, and then there will be some bananas. He's a male maker banana, meaning every male that, that he produces is going to be a banana. <clears throat> so we're definitely going to get a clutch of purple passions in there. She is a proven breeder. Um, she was about 2,500 grams when the season started. So we should have a decent sized clutch out of them. Um, my leopard enchi female shed a couple days ago and I 100% caught her ovulation. As you can see, she's curled up in the back. Um, she was paired up to Big Puma, my pinstripe enchi leopard, uh, orange dream male. So really with Big Puma's pairings, <clears throat> which is the leopard enchi female and the two super enchi orange dream females, I'm really just trying to make him, um, but make him better. And let me see. I don't know if he's, he's also paired up to my super inchy ghost female. I'm not going to bother him if they're in there, but at least I can show you what he looks like. Yeah, they're, they're hiding under there, but I'll show you what he looks like. So he is the, the guy on top here where I'm looking at his head right now. Um, he kind of looks like a big cat. <clears throat> so what I want to do is try to reproduce him and see if I can make it any better. If I can add any super inchy or super orange dream, um, super leopard, you know, there's obviously no super pinstripe, but if I can get super OD in that combo and make it a five gene combo, um, instead of a six gene combo, um, or instead of a four gene combo. And actually with these two <clears throat> super inchy OD females, She's in shed. This is her pre-lay shed, too. Um, I could make a super inchy, super orange dream, leopard, pinstripe snake. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, but I have double the chances of doing that because this girl and her sister, uh, definitely both ovulated, this girl already shed. And as you can see, she is all contorted and upside down and... and Definitely in the process of uh, building up those eggs. She shed on the 25th of March. So today being the 6th, you know, we've got 20 days, 3 weeks until she lays. <clears throat> and this girl, the other, her sister, is in the process of her, her shed cycle. And the leopard and she shed just yesterday. Um, so she's got a whole month left. Um, my Sterling Lesser female who laid last week has probably had three or four meals at this point. Um, well, she, no, she laid, when did she lay? She laid like two or three weeks ago. Um, she's been eating every probably five days or so. I'm just trying to make sure she's <clears throat> back on food and healthy. Um, she is looking really good. I'm really happy with the fact that she's eating again. She's not going anywhere. I'm keeping her, even if she's not in my breeding plans. She is a, just a super unique snake and she's not, not leaving the collection. Um, Crystal, my other big Lucy female is in shed. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if Tesla, my, uh, purple passion, blackhead leopard male was like getting the job done with any of these females um so i started pairing shredder with with i started pairing shredder and tesla up to princess crystal 
my special lesser GHI. And I've only been putting Shredder in with Snow White Snake. Um, just because they paired up last year and they laid a clutch. I don't know what they're doing this year. They're taking their time. I mean, she laid last year early, like March, and she's still not really showing signs of anything. So I might actually start putting Tesla in here just to get two mils going to both of them because I want to try to really get these Blue-Eyed Lucy's coming out. People love them. I have five females that um, can produce Lucy's, so I really want them to all go if they can. Um, and Annie here, my Lemon Blast female, <clears throat> I caught, she was Danky King's other female she was paired up to. Um, she is, I think, going through her shed right now. She definitely ovulated too. So I think she should be laying eggs here in the next 30 or so days. So I have three females, <clears throat> four females that just shed or are shedding right now who should be pregnant. Um, I have my pastor, past the lesser head clown who should be laying a clutch shortly. I have my Mojave Inchi female who, um, to be honest, I, I don't know if she's ovulating right now or not, um, but she should be going soon. And then I have all my Blue Eye Lucy females that, that I don't know what was going on with any of them. I'm hoping putting two different males in there will produce some sort of results because I have five of them. And I like, I'd like at least two or three of them to lay. Um, and there's, you know, my ultra pin male, my ultra male male, um, you know, he's back and healthy again. And I've only been pairing him up to my ultra male pinstripe female, um, because I don't care about anything else I was pairing him up to <clears throat> and I don't want to overwork him. So I've just been pairing him up to her. I don't know what's going on with them. I haven't seen any any uh progress one way or another um she did shed at the end of march but i have not seen any sort of follicle growth or ovulation or anything that looks like she's pregnant um so i don't know what's going on there but i've just kind of been leaving him in there for a day or two at a time and then taking him out um just to you know hopefully hopefully they lock up and they and they do something for me um and that's about it. I mean, my <clears throat> I started pairing up Dinky King Jr. to my females to try to make some urban camos. Um, he definitely locked up my Sterling female. She doesn't look like she wants anything to do with them. Um, I have a black pastel female who has been in the water bowl a lot. Um, but she was also paired up to danky king senior um so i don't know if she's gonna lock up with him or not i have been pairing him up with my silver bullet as well um and they seem to be liking each other she's actually going in the shed right now i don't think this is a pre-lay shed i just think it's a shed because she's actually been pounding rats weekly still um <clears throat> so i'm assuming this is just a, a normal shed but the way that they have been, they both come into this hide here and uh, they don't leave. <clears throat> that is kind of making me believe that they have been pairing up and locking up under there a lot. So I'm hoping that the next time she sheds, um, it's going to be a positive thing because that's really going to be my best bet to hit a um, urban camo. Um, since you need a super cinnamon uh, out of there, he's cinnamon obviously and she's super cinnamon. So we're guaranteed one copy of cinnamon out of that. Um, he's also super pastel and she's one copy of pastel. <clears throat> so we're guaranteed the one copy of pastel we need for that. Um, the only other thing that we need to worry about is him passing on the pieball gene and him passing on sandblast. Um, so, you know, her, him being super pastel and her being super cinnamon, the only things we really need to worry about is him passing on cinnamon, pieball and sandblast. Um, you know, it takes the pastel and the extra copy of cinnamon out of the equation. So it takes some of the guesswork out of there. Um, you can't really do much better than that unless you have like a super cinnamon pied sandblast male, um, which is a ton of money if you can even find it. But they're even hard to ID because once you start getting into the urban camos <clears throat> and you start getting 
pied mixed with sandblast mixed with super cinnamon sometimes the snake's all white and you can't tell what genes are in there anyways until you breed it so this is might be the closest i'll get to confirming um any of those genes unless i had a pied theme like a super like a panda pied or something um because you can use black pastel in that combo too so i'm not sure um but so that's the females that's the update with the racks that I'm going to be getting. Um, that's update with all the females um, in the breeding season so far. I'm, a, I'm assuming that my pastel lesser head clown should be laying here any day because she shed on the 8th and today's the 6th. So I'm hoping I have eggs in a day or two with her. Um, and hopefully it's a nice clutch because she actually looks, she looks really big. She's a pretty decent sized female, but she looks really big. Um, <clears throat> and other than that, you know, it's kind of just going along for the ride a lot of the um a lot of the new snakes that i got in are eating there's a couple that aren't eating yet um which i guess is expected with ball pythons i'm hoping they start eating sooner than rather than later um some of them some of them ate like literally the next day sometimes i had a couple that waited like a week to eat um <clears throat> and the other ones haven't even been here a week yet so usually what i try to do is i try to feed them the next day after they're here um if they eat at that point fantastic if they don't i just leave them alone i don't i don't bother them anymore because sometimes like the dreamsicle male um he's just he's still really kind of frightened i guess um he's kind of just hissing and snapping at anything that comes into the tub I actually might move him out of his tub into a different tub because he's in one of the smaller tubs um but there's no hide in there because nothing fits in there. I actually might move him into a bigger tub with a hide uh, because the hide's actually going to be a little tighter space than, than the tub itself. Um, so we'll see how that works out. I, I, I'm trying to figure out these snakes as we go. Once I get that 5540, it'll probably make my life a lot easier with trying to fit snakes into tubs and, and figuring out where, where the best fit for them are. Um, but, you know, that's it for now. Um... I should have another snake egg video with that pasta lesser clown coming up. Um, and then if she lays those eggs, I might actually be getting uh, putting up the, the leopard clown male for sale. Um, <clears throat> the only other female I paired him up to is my pinstripe and she female. And if she doesn't go at this point, she just shed March 10th, but I don't think that was a pre-lay shed. I didn't see any ovulation in her. Um, I might just hold off on breeding her anymore this year and just put her back on food. Um, I don't really have any plans for her. Um, and to be honest, I, I may not even keep her. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I've never seen a pinstripe NG female, um, on Morph Market. Um, so I, I hate to get rid of like a gene combo like that especially if I might use it in the future for something. Um, but we'll see what hatches out of these other clutches that he produced. Because if there's crazier looking females, I might just keep those as holdbacks and, you know, get rid of some of the, uh, the one or two gene combo females. So, but that's it for today. Uh, just an update on the breeding season and what I'm doing with my racks here in the snake room. Um, a lot of, like, again, a lot of stuff going on. It's still, kind of uh kind of slow you know we're in between snakes are just all starting to lay eggs nothing's hatching yet um you know we got the three clutches there and the clutch down there i did prep two more egg boxes here just assuming that at some point um we're gonna have more in there so <clears throat> it's it's starting to starting to ramp up you know my my racks are getting full um Eggs are going to start hatching. More females are going to start laying eggs. I'm going to have to build another rack. Um, so we're going to be super busy. Um, so it's like, again, I, I keep saying it, it's like the calm before the storm. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for stopping by today. And please remember to like and subscribe. See ya.